exciting. So I just got home and lo and behold, my latest impulse purchase is here waiting for me. This is a 1979 Toyota pickup truck with an R20 and 5 speed. And over there is an 83 Toyota with a 5 speed diesel engine. That thing's phenomenal. It gets 42 miles per gallon. I love that truck. This one here, um, apparently it ran when it was parked, which was, judging by the lichen growing all over it, quite a while ago. Uh, body's actually... I, I live in BC. This is the Rust Belt. Uh, this is a BC truck. And it's also a 79 Toyota, so... By my standards, this truck is in very good shape. Got a dent in the roof there. But, uh... For 150 bones, and uh, the interior here, I'll show you. Not too shabby, came with paperwork. Uh, apparently it belonged to a fella, and he passed away, and his wife couldn't, couldn't bring herself to drive it, I guess? Something like that? So it got parked for a long, long time. And, um, it was driven into its home and left there. But, um, you know what? This is pretty cool. I really like this. So, it says, uh, 62,000, so I'm going to guess it's 162. But, you know, my God, there isn't even any mouse poop in here. Don't smell too bad. I think this thing's going to be a runner. Let's have a look at the engine real quick. And then uh, I'm going to check the fluids. I know the rad's drier than a popcorn fart, so we'll have to put some rad coolant in it and see if it pisses out on the ground. But there's some mouse poo under here. Pull the air filter off, check that. Uh, need some brake fluid. Clutch works. This thing's got cruise control, believe it or not. We'll, uh, we'll pull the distributor cap. Check that out all the fluids and then uh, then we'll drop a battery in it and see if it goes. What is that? Is that a... I think that's an air pump hose. So it would have had, that would have been for smog I'm guessing. Yeah I'm guessing that it would have been for smog. Yeah I'm super excited about this. My god. You'd like... I was stunned to find that one. And here, I'll give you guys a look at this one, too. I've only had this one two, three weeks. Ducks? That's weird. No water around here. So this one is an 83. As um, far as we can figure, uh, it was parked 96-ish in a barn. And this is an American truck. It's got uh, typical soft spots in the floor. A little bit of surface rust here and there. Not too bad. Somebody's done some Bondo there. Um, quarters and corners. Good shape. Doors, good shape. Surface rust. Uh, it's got another soft spot here. This is pretty typical for these trucks to get a hole in the floor right here. Um, there is a pole here, which I put a little piece of galvanized over because it's noisy. The exhaust is cracked. And the interior is rough. The fellow we got it off of was using it as a work truck, and it didn't get much love. But uh, 148,000 miles and 44 miles per gallon. So pretty skookum. Cost me um, where I live in Enderby to go to Vernon, which is south of me, to do grocery shopping. I forget what. The round trip is, but in my Pontiac Vibe, that's a $12 trip. Probably more now because gas prices are pretty high. And this truck, less than less than two dollars and fifty cents. And diesel's uh, one thirty-three a liter right now, I think. So, yeah, this guy here, I think highway gets twenty-three. At least that's what the interwebs 
told me, uh, the old gorgle gargler. Got some dents to knock out. I bet you, I bet you we can knock that one out right now. Good as new. Probably from snow. Uh, let's have a look here. Look at the box. It's not rusted out. I haven't looked at any of this yet. I, my dad's neighbor hauled this. Um, I live near, I live um, a little bit east. Yeah, a little bit east of um, the Enderby Cliffs. And like, if you don't live around here, you'd never know what that is. But anyways, this truck was under the cliffs and uh, the fellow got it from his sister I was gonna get scrapped, believe it or not. Maybe, oh my god, look at the tailgate. Like, what? Like, this is not rusted out. Anyways, it came from under the cliffs there. And uh, he brought it to Vernon, which is a 40 minute drive south to where my dad lives, down the street from where my dad lives. And then my dad was only leaves the house like once every. F four days maybe and saw it sitting on this trailer and I had just gotten the, the brown truck and he said hey uh there's a, a neighbor guy that does scraps got a Toyota that looks like yours on his trailer should go have a look so I did and 150 bucks later I got this I'm so excited anyways I'm going to stop recording here I'm going to do all the checkup and we'll drop a battery in it and we'll pick back up when I got the battery in the truck. Probably gonna have to hotwire it unless there's a key, unless I can find a key. Anyways, I'll uh, I'll be back in a bit. All right, so I'm just doing the vacuuming and look at this. Pretty clean. I'm shocked. Nothing living in there. expecting considering the, how bad the top looks but pleasantly surprised I did check it does have oil in it the oil is not bad looking wow it's pretty clean down there too I haven't been able to find any keys anywhere in the truck so I'm going to uh, take the steering column apart and uh, pop the lock cylinder out so we can Turn the ignition on. It's starting to get late. I've got a battery in them. And I'm not getting any power. This battery's charged. I checked it. And somewhere between here and the ignition, something's going on. Maybe a mouse. I don't know yet. But it's getting late. i got a couple other things to take care of, so I'm going to call this for today. But I'm confident that it'll run. I vacuumed all the crap out of there too, you can see. All the crap around the windshield. We'll empty the, uh, the box out tomorrow. I'm guessing uh, they had a camper, an import camper on here. I'm thinking that's the electrical for that. Look at the chrome still on the plastic. So the other thing is, I just popped this off. Ow, it's banging my head. Bloody low ceiling on this truck. And look at all that corrosion. So I've got to clean all this up. Got my sandpaper. Got my needle nose pliers. But um, they are nice enough to, on the back of the ignition here, to label everything. So hot wiring it will not be a problem at all. Very nice of Toyota to do that. Um, does look like we had a leak look here on the bottom of the dash and obviously here there has been some water coming in from up here somewhere there's even a little spot of rust right here so I'll have to address that might pull the dash off and have a look at the electrical under there but for tonight that's enough but I'm not getting any power like not even the horns working which, 
God bless Toyota. Couldn't be bothered to make a left and a right and a center. We'll just use all one. We'll just use all rights. FM radio and shortwave, I'm guessing. That's important. We have to find out if that works. We need tunes. Clean this up. Looks like he had this duct tape film. So that means, to me, that means this isn't working. Oh, here it moving. Okay, so that works. So he just didn't like air coming out of there, I guess. But also, I don't know for sure. Maybe they just had this whether they didn't have AC or not, but I think this thing might have had AC at one time, which is insane. It's got a tack, which is cool. Uh, yeah. I think that's it for today. So I'm going to go do my other chores, and I'll continue to dick around with this tomorrow. Oh god, what the fuck? That feels like the nastiest, stickiest, good god, decomposed pleather. Ooh, that feels really gross. I don't know how to describe it. You ever pulled your um, your stove or your fridge out? You had that sticky shit on the floor from something you spilled. You didn't don't remember doing it, but there it is under the fridge, and it's got that weird, like sticky, but it's also like dusty kind of feeling yeah that's what that's what that feels like I'm not gonna touch that anymore it's gross also I get the feeling I know what did the old fella in smoker also I uh, I found the paperwork which I knew was in here and um, got uh, I'm not gonna show it on camera here but I will read it he paid in 1981 and they've got this truck down as in 1980, which is incorrect because the stamp on the door says 1970. He paid $299 in 1980, which is a hell of a price. 1981, sorry. October 29th, 1981. Enderby, BC. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. 299 was his insurance. And at the time... Let's see here. It had... Doesn't list the miles on here anywhere but yeah in bc this is a full year policy one million liability collision deductible a hundred dollars comprehensive deductive 50 premium 233 man that's cheap you know what i'm paying for my 2005 pontiac vibe like 1900 and change 299 paid by check See reverse for warnings. Yeah, so this is just the insurance paper. I'm going to have to find the registration slip. So I'll have to go to ICBC. And um, file with them to find the registration for this. Lost registration, blah, blah, blah. Uninsured vehicle. It's been off the road long enough. I got If I can get a bill for sale from that fella or his sister, then, uh, yeah. All right, um, we'll talk at you guys later. Stay safe and have fun.